Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Previously, I spoke to you about some basic terms that relate to the circle. We talked about chords, which are segments that connect or join two points that are on the circle. We talked about secants, which are lines that kind of go through and through the circle, and tangents, which connect to the circle or share only one common point, the point of tangency, or touch the circle at only one point. So a radius will have two endpoints. One endpoint, of course, is the center, and the other endpoint is the point that is on the circle. So if a radius were drawn from the center of the circle to the point of tangency, this radius would be perpendicular to the tangent, or the tangent will perpendicular to the radius whose one of its endpoints is the point of tangency. I've also spoke to you previously about a theorem that relates to two tangent segments. Now here we have two tangent segments. You can call this segment AP and here's a segment BP here. Now this theorem stated that two tangent segments from the same external point, in this case point P, two tangent segments from the same external point will be congruent like this. So these are two theorems that we learned about tangents. And, and I suggested to you before that the remainder of the chapters is basically more theorems that relate to chords, tangents, and secants. However, before we learn those theorems, we have to know about arcs and sectors, two additional concepts that we have to master, and that's what we shall do today. I have before you over here a circle, let's call this circle Q. And what I've done is I've taken out or selected a part of the circumference of the circle. And let's call this point, point A and point B. So an arc basically is a part of a circle, a part of the circumference of a circle. So if I were to take like, you know, little scissors and cut this little piece of the circle out, this here would be arc. And if I were to draw a line segment here for you like this, right, a common line segment with the two endpoints like here, and let's say hypothetically, let's label this as AB as well. So this would be a line segment AB and we would write it like this. And as you know, a line segment has two endpoints. Here's one endpoint and here's the other endpoint. And so the two endpoints of this line segment are A and B. An arc similarly has two endpoints. This is the one endpoint, and this is the other endpoint. So an arc similarly has two endpoints, and the way you would write an arc is like this, with a little cap on the top, a little arc on the top. So you would read this as arc AB. So arcs are designated in a similar fashion to segments, and the way you would write this particular arc, as I said, is like this. This is arc AB. A more formal definition of an arc would be a set that contains the two points in a circle and all points on the circle needed to connect the two points in a straight path. So an arc consists of two points on the circle and all points on the circle needed to connect the points in a single path. In other words, now arcs come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. And I've drawn two other arcs over here and here's the two endpoints and we can call this point L and point M and this is a set this is a center of the circle as I have which I've drawn as a reference if you recall the center of a circle itself is not part of the circle and here's a very big arc which is almost the entirety of the circumference of the circle over here let's call this circle circle Q now if I were to draw in the radii that connect the endpoints of this arc to the center of the circle like this we create we create an angle and this angle right here is given a name it's called the central angle the central angle is the angle that kind of cuts out this particular arc so the central angle is the angle that creates the arc so to speak we say the central angle subtends the arc so in these other examples, if I were to draw in the radii over here, this would be the central angle over here. And in the last example, if I were to draw in the radii like this, the central angle that creates or cuts out this particular arc is this big angle over here. Now let's assume that this central angle measures 60 degrees. So this is a 60 degree central angle. 
we also say that the measure of arc AB is 60 degrees like this. So we measure the arc, so to speak, by measuring the central angle. So the measure of this arc is 60 degrees. Now I've drawn another circle over here and I'm going to draw in another central angle over here like this. And let's assume this particular angle over here is 120 degrees. So the central angle here is 120 degrees. And let's draw out this arc. And let's call this arc PR. And we can call this circle, circle Q. So we say the measure of arc PR over here is going to be 120 degrees. I meant to say over here 120 degrees like this. So the measure of arc PR is 120 degrees. Now there's another concept that we have to understand. I have another circle here, I've labeled circle C, and I have picked two points here from the circle, point A and point B. You realize that anytime you pick two points from the circle, you create in fact two arcs. One here that you see like this, the arc AB, and then there's another arc that goes all the way around like this. So how do we tell the difference between these two arcs? So if I say arc AB, do I refer to this arc or do I refer to this arc, correct? Well, here we have to understand the concept of a major and a minor arc. The smaller arc that you see over here is called a minor arc. And the bigger arc that you see over here, this is called a major arc. So we have a minor arc and we have a major arc. A minor arc is any arc that is less than 180 degrees. That is smaller than half of the circle. And a major arc is any arc that is greater than or equal to 180 degrees like this. Okay, so a minor arc is a small arc, and that's an arc that is less than 180 degrees. That's the measure of the arc is less than 180 degrees, or the central angle that subtends the arc is less than 180 degrees. So in this case, the, this here, this would be the minor arc, and this one over here would be the major arc. Now, another very important thing that we have to understand about minor and major arcs is that we use two alphabets or two letters to name minor arcs. So here you can say arc AB like thus. But to name major arcs, we need three letters or three alphabets like this. So let's call this particular point point D. So we would name this big arc over here, we would call that arc AD b like this or we can also name it alternatively arc b d a going backwards like this so we we use three alphabets or three letters to name major arcs and we use two letters to name minor arcs so there's no confusion which arc you're talking about so this is minor arc a b or minor arc b a and this is the major arc and you will use three letters to name major arc this would be arc a d b or arc b d a like thus so in this way you you negate all ambiguity all confusion as to which arc that you're referring to so if I have a circle here and I'm going to draw the central angle over here that subtends this particular arc and if this is 60 degrees this arc would be a minor arc and let's label this again AB so the measure of arc AB would be 60 degrees and then this major arc over here and that hand like this let's pick a point over here like D so the measure of arc A D B over here this would be it would be the remainder of this over here right because the central angle would be this particular angle that would subtend or create or cut out the major arc so that would be 360 degrees minus 60 degrees right so that would be 300 degrees like thus so this is how we name arcs and um, this is how we uh, describe the measure angle measurements based on the central angle and finally what if we have an arc that is 180 degrees like this? So I have a 180 degree 
central angle over here, which is half of the circle. Well, then we have created two major arcs. This is one major arc over here, and we have a second major arc. And as I have suggested, we would need three points to label these uh, a, uh, arcs. So we have, here's a point A and a point B, and we have to pick a point over here, like in this side. Let's call that, uh, since this is, let's call the circle C again. So this is point D, and this is point E over here, let's say. So we have one arc, let's say going this way. This is arc A, D, B, right? And the measure of this arc is going to be uh, 180 degrees. And then we have another arc over here. You can go this way or this way. You can label it either way. And it would mean, mean the same thing. We can, let's call this this way. So the measure of arc B, E, A, measure of arc B, E, A is also going to be 180 degrees. Now, if you have half of the circle like this, of course, that's a semicircle. So half of the circle or the major arc is going to be a semicircle. Now, another important concept is about arcs that are congruent. So I have an arc over here. Let's call the circle circle K. And I have two points here, point A and point B, which will serve as the endpoints of this arc AB. So I have arc AB over here. And let's say the angle again here is 60 degrees. Okay, so the measure of angle, a uh, measure of arc AB is 60 degrees. And the measure of central angle, so the measure of angle AKB, this measure of this angle is also 60 degrees, okay? Because arcs are measured based on their ang central angles. Now, the concept of congruent arcs, for arcs to be congruent, they have to have the same central angle. So I'm gonna try to draw another central angle. I'm gonna guesstimate this, right? It's not gonna be probably the same, but I'm gonna have to take my word for it, okay? So here's another arc, okay? Let's call this one, um, G and H, these two points, and we're going to pretend that this is also 60 degrees. Then the measure of arc GH is also 60 degrees. So now we have two arcs, that's one over here, and that's one over here, whose central angles are congruent. If the central angles here are congruent, as you can see, the length of these arcs, these arcs would be congruent, correct? So for two arcs to be congruent, they must have the same central angle, they must also have the same length. That is, if you were to take a tape measure and like measure out the length over here, like, you know, if you were to travel from point A to point B or from point B to point A, so if you were to travel this, like if you imagine a little bicycle or something, to how, how, how many inches or how many miles would you travel? So the linear distance from A to B, so to speak, or the curve distance, the arc distance, that's called the arc length. So for two arcs to be congruent, right? So in this case, we can say that arc AB is going to be congruent to arc GH in this sense, okay? Because their central angles are the same and their... Um, uh, their lengths are going to be congruent. But we have to be very careful in this in one very important way. Here, for example, I have drawn two concentric circles. So we have two concentric circles with the same center. Let's call this uh, center, uh, center Q. Now, I'm going to draw out um, an arc that um, I'm going to guess to be approximately 60 degrees over here. So here's, I'm going to draw both radii over here and I'm guessing that this is like 60 degrees okay well maybe I could guess a little bit better to, uh, maybe that doesn't quite look like 60 degrees uh, maybe that's a little bit a better pro approximation so this is 60 degrees now let's imagine here that this will th this is these are two endpoints of this particular arc on the smaller circle in AB and then I have the, this bigger circle over here, like here with the, uh, now that you see. And we can call these two points, uh, uh, let's call them CD. Now you can see this smaller arc over here, this arc AB, like this, 
the central arc of the uh, angle for that is 60 degrees. So here I can say the measure of the arc AB is going to be 60 degrees. But then at the same time, the measure of arc CD is also 60 degrees because the central angle or the angle that subtends that arc is the same angle over here, 60 degrees. So the measure of arc CD all right, is also 60 degrees. Now this teaches us a very important concept that you can have the same central angle and then you can have two different different arcs because their lengths are different. And the lengths are different because they come from two different circles of different radii, correct? The smaller circle over here has this as the radius. That's the, that's the radius of the smaller circle. And then we have the bigger circle and the radius of the bigger circle is like over here from the, this big radius. So for two arcs to be congruent, therefore you must appreciate that first they must have the same central angle like, you, like we have over here, arc AB and arc GH over here, they have the same central angle. So they first must have the same central angle that's their central angle must be congruent but also they must be either from the same circle like you see over here in this first example here is circle k either they must be from the same circle because in this case the radii would be the same the radius would be the, would be the same so either they must be from the same circle or they must be from congruent circles the circle with the same radii so for two arcs to be congruent, their central angles must be congruent, and the radius to which this, uh, to, to the, of the circles to which they belong to must be congruent. Otherwise, they would be of different lengths. The arcs would be of different lengths. Now, how do we calculate arc lengths? All right. So let's see. I have a circle over here. Uh, let's call this circle M. Now, in this circle, I'm going to draw out an arc. I'm going to draw out the central angle over here. And it's like this. That's the radius here. And that's the radius here. And I have actually drawn a special central angle. I've drawn here a 90 degree angle, hopefully. And that's the center M. So this is a 90 degree angle. And I'm going to suggest that the, uh, the radius here is uh, 2. Okay, so I have a, a radius of this particular circle. The radius is 2, and um, I have a 90 degree angle. And I have created a arc, or have subtended an arc, so to speak, here like this. Okay, so you can see then the measure of arc AB is going to be 90 degrees, correct? Now, what I want to know is what's the length of this arc? In other words, if we were to take a tape measure, how much would that length be? Well, if you appreciate that the circumference of a circle, if you remember, is this formula, 2 pi r. The circumference of this circle is 2 times pi times the radius of this circle, which happens to be 2. So the circumference of this circle is 2 pi r or 4 pi, correct? So that's the circumference of this circle. So in other words, if you were to take a tape measure and just like, or um, measure, or a ruler, if you could, like it measure this all out, right? If you were to take a thread and kind of like wrap around the circle and open up the thread and, and see how, how long it is using a ruler, that's the circumference. So the entire circumference of the circle is 4 pi, correct? So now this particular arc is 90 degrees, which is like one fourth of the circle, right? So if the entire circle is 4 pi, the 90 degree, this particular arc, arc AB, right, is going to be one fourth of that. So this arc length, the arc length of AB, is going to be one fourth, right, of the 4 pi, correct? So because it's in 90 degrees, 90 degrees is one fourth of the whole circle, correct? So I can say then that the arc length, the arc length of arc AB, okay, is going to be one fourth of the four pi, one fourth of the entire circle, which is like one fourth of the circumference of the circle. And one fourth of four pi, of course, is just one pi. So 
the arc length, so the length of the arc, length of arc AC here is going to be just 1 pi. Now imagine a second scenario. I have drawn the same circle over here, circle M, and the radius is still 2. Now here I have a 180 degree angle and I want to know the arc length. So let's, let's put another point here. So point E. I want to know the length I want to know the length of CED. I want to know the length of arc CED. Now the central angle is 180 degrees, but I want to know the length over here, kind of like the you were to measure using a tape measure or like a ruler, for example, so to speak. Well, we know the circumference again. The circumference of this circle again is 2 times pi times r. The radius is 2 correct? So the circumference of this circle is 4 pi, just like we calculated over here. So the circumference is 4 pi. In this case, we have 180 degrees, which is half of a circle. So the arc length, okay, the, the length of arc CED over here is going to be one half of the total circumference. In this case, the total circumference is 4 pi, one half of that is going to be 2 pi. So the arc length over here of this arc, which is a semicircle, half the circle, the semicircle, the, the length of this semicircle is going to be 2 pi. Now, now finally, let's go back to our original uh, circle over here. I have drawn out arc AB and I'm going to draw out the central angle which is 60 degrees and then I'm going to say again that the radius here is 2. I want to know the arc length over here. The concept is still the same. The arc length AB is going to be some fraction of the total circumference. Well the circumference again is 2 times pi times r. The radius is 2. The circumference here is 4 pi. Now but what fraction? What fraction is this of the entire circle? See, in the two previous example, it was 90 degrees, which is one-fourth of a circle, and then 180 degrees, which was one-half of a circle. Then what is 60 degrees? Well, 60 degrees is going to be 60 degrees of the entire circle, or of 360 degrees out of 360 degrees. So the arc length over here, is going to be some fraction of the entire circle. The length of the arc is going to be some fraction of the entire circle and some fraction, therefore, of the circumference of a circle. So what fraction is that going to be? Well, whatever angle it cuts out, right? Whatever the central angle is. So whatever the angle of the arc is, in this case it is 60 degrees out of 360 degrees, that fraction is going to be the, the arc length, correct? So in our example here, so 60 out of, oh, this goes six times, right? So this is going to be one-sixth of the circumference, which was 4 pi, which we have already calculated over here. You can simplify this a little bit to 2 goes in there 2 times and 2 goes into 6 3 times. So the arc length over here, okay, or, or the length of arc, we can say the length of arc AB is going to be 2 thirds pi. So, so we can summarize this and say the arc length for any particular arc is going to be some fraction of the total circumference of the circle. So arc length is going to be some fraction of the circumference of the circle. Now what fraction is going to be? Well it's going to be whatever the measure of the arc is. So whatever the measure of the arc is out of 360 degrees that fraction of the total circumference will be the arc length. Okay, so I'm just going to summarize briefly over here. Arcs are part of the circumference of the circle. There are two types of arcs, minor arcs and major arcs. Minor arcs are those arcs that are less than 180 degrees, and we use two alphabets to name them. And major arcs are greater than or equal to 180 degrees, and we use three alphabets to name the arcs. Arcs are measured based on the central angles. So the measure of the central angle is the measure of the arc that's subtended by the central angle. Now, 
I also cautioned you that if two arcs have the same central angle does not mean that they are congruent. Two arcs that have the same central angle and the same radius, like you see, will be congruent. So they have to have the same central angle and the same radius, either belonging to the same circle or of congruent circles. Because as you see in this particular example, that you can have the same central angle, they will subtend two very different arcs of different lengths. And finally, I suggest to you that you calculate arc lengths by taking some fraction of the entire circumference. And the fraction is the measure of the arc out of the 360 degrees. So that will give you the actual arc length. Inshallah, we shall develop these concepts next time. Until then, as-salatu wassalamu rasulillah wa rabbil alameen. As-salamu alaykum.